Back. All right. Oh. Whenever right, you're uh, ready, Coach. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Good to see y'all. A long break. It's good to get back to some normal things. Uh, what's going on? But uh, you know, today, of course, a great day. Uh, trying to put the finishing touches on our signing class for the future of our organization, which I think is extremely bright. In what was going on? Uh, you know, we uh, had a new signee today already, who's already announced, which was uh, Shamar Stewart, which is another great addition to our class. I mean, big, strong, athletic guy, and those guys that put their hand in the dirt, especially on that edge and, and inside, that can change the game and offense, defensive lineman. But he's a guy that can rush, he can play the run, he can play the pass, he can overpower you, he can outspeed you. I mean, just tremendous athlete and tremendous addition to our class. And on top of that, he's a better person than he is player. I mean, great, fun to be around, great, great personality, very intelligent young man. has got a great future ahead of him. And it will be a huge part of, I think, what we're doing going forward. Really excited about him, getting him, along with all the other signees in, in which we've had. Uh, this class has uh, really turned into a heck of a class, in my opinion. Again, but like I say, that's still on paper. They still have to go play. They have to get developed. They have to... Uh, some guys will develop really quickly. Some guys may take, you know, take a little time. That's just part of it. But they wait and see the production and the things they do. But I, you know, there's the guys that we went after, the guys we wanted, that a lot of people in this country wanted. And not only uh, is there great athletic ability, and I think there's great intelligence. I think there's great character, and I think there's guys who want to compete and have the same common goal in which we have here at Texas A&M is to be the best in everything we do and be a well-rounded person, be a great student, represent this university with a lot of pride in the, in the athletics, and get developed one day, hopefully. You know, making the NFL and then let the Aggie Network take care of them when they're done. And uh, the twelfth man, the things that go on and where we're at. But really excited about it. Again, we keep adding to the. It's a well-rounded, it's probably as well-rounded class may have ever had as far as every position's hit. I think there's guys that can make a difference in a lot in all those different positions. Uh, and that's what you got to have, which creates the competition within your own team, which creates a competition within your own organization, which makes you a better team. And uh, that's the guys you practice against each and every day. And we you know, keep increasing the talent levels as we go and where we're going. So very excited about that and the future of things that uh, are going on right now at A&M. And very excited about it for sure. May I have any questions? Down front, Brent, batting leadoff, and then Travis. Uh, I know it's been on your mind. So you stacked ten, top ten classes together now for four years in a row. I don't think there was ever even two before that. So do you kind of consider it a slap in the face or whatever when there's these thoughts out there that Very. it's because a lot of money is being spent and just your thoughts? Here's what I'm going to say, and this is point blank. This is point blank. to the Because I, here, here's, here's my problem. There is no $30 million fund. There is no $5 million. There is no $10 million. This is garbage, okay? And it does. It pisses me off that people – and here it comes from a site called Bro Bible by a guy named Slice Bread. Then everybody runs with it. So it's written on the internet as gospel. How irresponsible is that? You got, I'm gonna tell you some of that. There's some very reputable writers in college football and sports that wrote it and have said it and have done things. That's unbelievable to me. Some, I, when I first heard it, I laughed. I said, oh yeah, what a clown. I mean, somebody, I didn't even think anything of it because I don't have social media. And it kept building in lately. I've heard more about it. To me, it's insulting to the players that we recruited that that's why they would come here. You ever been to a game here? You ever come to school here and see the education? You ever talk about the 12th man, the Aggie Network when you're done? There ain't a better university in this country. And it's insulting to what you say. And all these, and we got writers who, who have said it and done it off sliced bread. A guy named Slice, who made it up. Love to see who sliced bread is and put it out there with sliced bread. Let me find out where it comes from. And then to have coaches in our league and across this league to say it, Clown acts, all right? Irresponsible as hell. Multiple coaches in our league. And the guys griping about NIL, griping about transfer portal, using it the most and bragging about it the most. That's the ironic part. You want character? I'll, trust, I'll take it with any of y'all. It's a joke. It does piss me off. The other thing, when you look at, at, at vice president, I get another one, vice president of Notre Dame. Supposed to be a reputable university, right? That's a heck of a person leading a reputable university. I'd be real proud if I hired that guy, read it off sliced bread. But it, it, they say it because it's written on the Internet. What are, we worry about the kids and social media and Internet. How about grown-ups? How about the guys that are supposed to be setting an example? How about writers who are supposed to be writing the right thing? How about coaches who are supposed to be doing the right thing? And I'll tell you what, I know how some of those guys recruit too. Go dig into that. I know the history. I know the tradition. I know, and I know things. Trust me, you don't want to go down that avenue. It's ridiculous. And it's irresponsible, and it's unbelievable. I ain't just talking about one. 
Multiple people got NIL issues. It's funny, when Nick Saban said his quarterback got an $800,000 deal, it was wonderful. Now it ain't wonderful no more, huh? But ours, at, ours we ain't got that. Ours are on record what comes up. We ain't doing all them big deals. There ain't none on our place that we know of. That's funny when you do it. It's hip- and then we gripe about the transfer portal, and you, take, you guys take more than everybody. What's about that? And what goes on? Hip- the hypocrisy is a joke. It's an absolute joke, and it's insulting to, uh, to our staff, how hard we work, to how we do things, and it's insulting to Texas A&M because there ain't a better place to go to school and play ball. If you don't like it, we're coming on. Get used to it. All right? We ain't going nowhere. It, it, it's, it's an absolute joke that people put the hard work in and do it. It's irresponsible, but it's funny when they get it, it's all okay. Ball games are changing, man. It ain't because of NIL and what goes on. It's pretty irresponsible of all of them. They're clowns. We'll go next. If they got a problem with it, come see me. I ain't a hard guy to find. We'll be in some meetings. You can say anything you want. We can do anything you want. I ain't got no problem with it. I promise you that shit. All right, Travis, next question. Coach, with uh, the the three uh, five-star defensive linemen, I know a lot of it starts with defensive line for you. How important was that uh, part of the 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 guys who can control the game, the guys who put their hand in the dirt, are the guys that matter. And that, I mean, as far as can change the game immediately. And it gives you so much freedom if you got legitimate guys all the way across the board that can't create double teams and pass rush, can't create big double teams and run, they're getting a lot of one on ones, and you don't have to be vulnerable in a secondary to create. Now, you can also blitz and create unbelievable packages, but it lets you the multitude of things you have up front when you can control the front, just like San Francisco did. I mean, you watch San Francisco's front in the playoffs, they were unbelievable how they did things up front and in their secondaries and limited how great a defense they played. And we, we hopefully we've got them, the big guys across the board. The ends on the edge, the athleticism, the size, the power, the guys, the multitude of positions they can play, be moved around and matched up. Very excited about every one of them. Extremely excited. Second row, Olin. Hey, Jimbo, a couple of things. First of all, just to, for clarification for myself, uh, uh, Shamar is an edge player? Yes. Okay. And uh, it's just, just an extra big one. I mean, uh, and that's a size. Those guys have the uniqueness of size, power, and speed. Uh, have you contacted or plan to contact any of the coaches that you were just talking about reacting to? Uh, no, because I don't really care what they think. They just want to make comments. They can come see me if they need them. <laughs> okay. I ain't and got a problem with it, I promise you. Any chance you're going to add? Do you, do you, how do you feel about the possibility of adding to this class? Uh, Possibly. I mean, you know, you, you got more guys you could, but also we got, you know, we got a roster that's getting full pretty much what we're at and guys, and there'll be guys that get in the portal, do things. We understand that. But, you know, we'll see. Could be more. Go to the left, Alex. Hey, Jimbo, back here. Hey, uh, two-parter, you got, a, you got a few local guys that are accepted some preferred walk-on roles. Um, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay, them. never mind. I, I wish I could. I mean, I, it's illegal. Well, just in general, what, what do preferred walk-ons add to your program, and how do you kind of go about selecting who those guys are? Well, I mean, guys that we think can have an impact. A lot of those guys could possibly have scholarships at other institutions, other things that, you know, we just didn't have a place to play, you know, and maybe they could earn one down the line, and they, they play a huge role. And that's, that's what the 12th man's about, and all the walk-ons in which we have. We take a lot of pride in walk-ons here, and, and I have, I've had some great ones and guys that come on and got scholarships playing in the NFL right now. I mean, it, it's amazing because, listen, we sure don't have the book on, on predicting every guy and, and recruiting every guy and, and evaluating them perfectly. There's a lot of guys that do that and have the will to do it, and God bless them for doing it. And they're a huge part of our team. And not only allow you to practice, they develop your players, the things that go on, and also can have a chance to be a 12th man here. Fourth row, David Nuno. Jimbo, when you look at the totality of this class and all the, I don't want to call it holes, but places you were able to fill. No, they are. They're, I mean, there's always holes. I mean, you go across the board from we got a great quarterback, Playmaking down, we got three great receivers, size, speed, athleticism, ball skills, and you know, and then listen, today's game, you gotta hit big plays. You gotta have skill guys that you can't coach every yard. I, I say it's between them and God. Coaches take credit for it, but them guys that jump over guys, run around guys, outrun guys, you gotta have guys that do that. Backs that can make plays, run over people, make the crucial yards, the red zone yards, the co- you know, we've got that. And Le'Veon and there's three receivers, size up front, defensively, you can create sacks and negative plays. Now, again, and the other thing is our secondary. I mean, I'm excited about the length, size, and speed of our secondary at corner, at safety. I mean, when you go into it right here, just in cornerbacks, I mean, you got Bobby Taylor, Bryce Anderson, Smoke Bowie, Killer Brew, Denver Harris, Jared Kerr, 
Those guys can all play. Ish Harris, Marcho Harris at linebacker, can run cover. Walter and Gabe up front. E9, Shamar and Anthony. Jaden Scarlett, Malik Sela. P.J. Williams, Hunter Herb, Nabu, Dewberry. I mean, on offense, those offensive linemen. I mean, Donovan Green, the tight ends is another group. Donovan Dean, 3 O'Mellon, and Jake Johnson. I mean, guys have – they're all 6'4 six, to 6'6 six, or 6'5 six, to 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, can run, change direction, covered when – they're never covered with – even when they're covered with size. I mean, then you got Evan Stewart, Chris, who looks great right now. Chris Marshall, tremendous games, athleticism, killing it bad. Noah Thomas, great athlete. Le'Veon Moss, Wegman, and then Max Johnson. I mean, the multitude of quarterback – the guys we have with, you know, college experience, which is the one portal guy we've had. We've only had two portal guys in two years and, and things we do. With, uh, so, I mean, it's just, it's just an overall class that's extremely good, I think, in playmaking ability up front and in skill because there's playmakers up front too that can get to create the negative plays or guys you know you can run behind it. I, I'm just excited about it. But, now they still have to go play. We have to develop them. We have to coach them. We have to get them in the right spots. And, you know, that, that's our job to do that. Go to the left, cease, then to the back. Yeah, Jimbo, so, so we've been through this. The, the NIL, what kind of control would you like? Do you think there's going to be some kind of control eventually? And what about the transfer portal? I mean, you, like you've mentioned, there's been like some coaches bringing eight or nine or ten new guys. Every year, I mean, listen, it, it's out there. There's no rules that regulate it. I'm not the guy who regulates it. Do you want some kind of re- – you always want some kind of regulation. But I'm not I – don't, I don't have the expertise to do it. Do I, is it. Is it making things different? No doubt. I mean, no doubt. And there's – listen, there's reasons to transfer. For guys that transferred, you get behind guys and you got a couple years left. I mean, I understand this. Do we want them to fight through adversity and just because you're in a bad situation, that doesn't mean you're going to stay there and learning to fight through that? I believe in that 100, and that's part of growing up in life, competing in ball, competing in situations in life. I agree with that 1,000%, but there are also times for the guys that transfer. People, you know, got to be smarter than me to figure that out. The NIL, we don't control the NIL. We don't do that. That's outside forces, outside funds, whatever goes on with companies, things that go on, just like Alabama's like $800 million deals, whatever they got. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's a lot of issues in that. And it's not used in recruiting. And it's, it's not out there. And do people, yes. How many of those guys are complaining? Their NIL deals weren't the real NIL deals. They're old NIL deals. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'll stand by that, too, and uh, things that go on. But, you know, it's here to stay. It's a factor in things. But I think that the nominee, I mean, to say that some of these things, not just our class, but what goes on, I think there's going to be a fine line of what's reality. It's like anything that's new. It's news, the made-up numbers, and if somebody says it, of course, if it's on the Internet, it is desperately true. It is guaranteed true. It is 100% true. So I think we'll find out the reality as we go. Go back behind the lights, Justin. Hey, Coach, of the early enrollees, how beneficial is that for them to get on campus early and, and get to work? It, it, is, it is a help because, I mean, just, you know, you, you learn how things are done. You used to get to your teammates. You learn your way around school, your comfort zone now compared to what you're going to be in fall when it's new. And you also learn the new languages. Like, football, a, it's a foreign language that they have to come and learn how to communicate so they can apply their abilities in which it goes. There is an advantage, but it's not a necessity. I mean, a lot of our guys that started last year and played as freshmen didn't come in early. And I've, had it, I've had that happen both ways. But to say that gives you an extra semester of school, help toward your graduation, you know, into summer school, and you get the lay of the land, I think it's a great thing. I really do. And uh, I think our guys I, – I tell you what, we've had 12 guys that come in early. All are doing exceptionally well, uh, fitting in great, and I'm a, I wouldn't throw any of them back, I promise. They could get us for having too many fish in the, in the, in the live well. I ain't, I ain't throwing them back. They're too good. <laughs> Go fourth row on the left. Howdy, Coach. Howdy. Uh, um, at, at what point, uh, you know, this, this class is going to be the highest-ranked class in the history. At, at what point did you kind of realize that this was a special class? And, and my second question is – You know what I know is a special class? I'll, let me answer it one before you ask your second one. It is this. They recruited each other every bit that we recruited them. We were coming off that 9-1 year, and I thought we were the second-best team in this country going in. I really did. should have been in the playoff. All right? We weren't. Okay, we lived it. Those kids saw that. We went in here and – the atmosphere and environments in that stadium last year, was there, is there a better place to go watch a game? The Alabama game, even the, even the game we lost Mississippi State, the atmosphere, environments, early games, the Auburn game, the South Carolina game, those games, and they were here seeing that, you know what I'm saying? And they knew they wanted to be a part of something. They wanted to be the first to do something somewhere. They recruited each other as much as we recruited them. There was a bond between those guys and a unity that those guys went together and said, you know something? In football, it takes all of us to win a championship. That's what we want to do. And I think that was a big part of this whole scenario of how it did and how it went together. And, 
And I know that you uh, you mentioned that the, uh, talking about the early signing period, and that you you said you'd even like to have it in August. How how difficult is it from the early signing period in December until now? In, in and I say, see, here's my problem. I understand the coaching changes, but the, the, if we were just now signing this class, the wear and tear on our assistant coaches would be it's it's merciless what you go through a year and how you got to hold that together and then changing all this stuff. And I understand for the coaching changes, those guys can get out. And they got a second signing class to get to. But the early signing period, in my opinion, is a great thing. I even like it earlier. It's no problem, but I like it where it's at. I don't think we should change it. And I, and I, I would just did a coaching change and had to come in and try to put together a class in a two-week period. I understand that. That's part of it. But I think it's beneficial for the coaches, the players, and everyone else involved to have an early signing period. Well, good. Rob? All right, Travis. Hey, Coach, uh, with, with uh, Connor Wigman, and I know he's a, a two-sport guy, how does that process work with you and Coach Schlossnagel? I know they said he's going to focus on football. Um, yeah, he's in football right now. He, he, that was his choice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was, when I first signed him, I assumed he would stay and play baseball because he's a significant baseball player and could be a very high draft pick. But he, he expressed to me from the get-go, Coach, I want to be a football player first, then play baseball, and I want to do it. And he told me his plan of coming in, not fooling with baseball, that if, so he could learn the offense, get the offense, understand things, go through fall ball, and then come back like a normal freshman and then be able to do both, which would be great, which I've had multiple guys that have done that, whether it's track, which we have here, track guys, or baseball guys at other places I've played. Jameis was a great one, you know, a great example of that, who was you know, going to be a first, second-round baseball guy just like he was football. And uh, football was always number one, and he could have went either way. I think it would be the same for Connor. And, but he, he loves football and wants to play baseball, and I respect that. And, and I like two-sport guys, I really do. Getting that worked out. And then I believe we haven't talked to you since the, uh, the hiring of, of D.J. Durkin and then the promotions in, in the staff as well. I've been very excited about that. I mean, D.J. Durkin, I think, brings a lot to the table. He and, he and Tooch, Coach Santucci, uh, being co-coordinators, we did some, we're going to stay as a four-down team. We're going to keep the things in which we do, and we will add new packages with the new coordinators coming in that create some things and no huddle and third downs and different things that we'll have and we'll always constantly add. And I think we have two great guys. We kept the great staff intact, and I, which I believe is one of the best staffs in college football offensively things in which we do, and then Elijah moving up assistant head coach and uh, run game coordinator, promotions he's done, what he's done is, is done a great job, and our whole staff. I mean, other guys get promotions. There'll be a lot of them that, you know, we want to do that with. Can't get everybody at once. Um, offensively, uh, James Coley will move as a co-coordinator with us on offense and what goes on. He'll also be on offense. I think he's done a great job in recruiting in the future of our game and knows us, and he and uh, our offensive staff, you know, We'll do him and Daryl will work closely together in what we do and stay in that relationship and, and where we go and what we do. And I think we got some great guys. Uh, Coach Adazio coming in, uh, awesome guy I've known for a long time. I mean, he's, he, when he was at Florida, when he was at Boston College, when he was at Temple, I mean, tremendous line coach. I, I thought as good as anywhere, any anytime, the guys I played against, I always thought his guys were hard, tough, competitive, smart, but we're really prepared to play the game and understood how to compete and understood the ins and outs of protection and run stuff, and I think does as good a job as anybody, and we're very blessed to have him. And plus you got another head coach on staff that, you know, and other guys have been like Daryl and some other guys have been head coaches. And, you know, it's really good. Go left side, Zach, and then Brent. Jim, I know the interaction that you've been able to have with the guys is probably a lot more limited than it will be in the spring, but as far as Max Johnson and the impact that he's made since – coming onto campus and in the quarterback room? I haven't seen that. You know, I mean, we, the meetings, we'll start them now this week. We just got back off the road. But, you know, our players seem to like him. He's fit in really well. The guys, I mean, you know, the things I've heard from him have been excellent. The workout rooms, an excellent athlete, big, strong guy that's doing really well. And our players all speak. Our receivers say, oh, he throws it well, plays well. And those guys are doing a good job. I think he's fitting in very well. I'm very blessed to have Max and uh, that experience and, and ability in that room. Time for a couple more, Brett. I looked up some of the old stories. Were you first impressed with DJ Durkin back to y'all's Florida oh, encounters? Yes. Or did you even know him before then? Because I, I, I knew him, I knew him as an assistant before he was a coordinator, the young guy. And the guys in the business have speak out said, you know, Dan Quinn and those guys, I've heard Dan speak, and it was very high on him. Will was high on him. Guys I know, and, and when they coached against us, very well prepared, did a great job. Not only don't Miss, but back to the Florida days and watched him at Michigan. We played those Michigan. At, he had taken over Michigan the year before we played him in the Orange Bowl and kind of put that, orchestrated that defense together and did some things. And I know they were great on, you know, we looked at a film for two years. You know, he's looking at a bowl game and tried to go back. But everywhere he's been, he's done a tremendous job in, in with the defenses. So when you bring in these highly rated guys, five stars, four stars, mm -hmm. who have been told they're so great and everything like that, how do you then turn and rein that in, but also now knowing that they can leave without penalty in their, you Listen, know? you, you said you, you're, get, you're getting an opportunity to play. Best players are going to play. 
be able to compete, be able to deal with adversity, and understand that, you know, you want to be on a team, and to get a team, you, it takes time to work. And I think the character of these guys, could there be some? Yes, I mean, that's at, at, in any class right now. Your guys leave everywhere, but that's what you got to have. And the guys, will, the guys that embrace the competition will be the guys that play great and the guys that, you know, work their way through. And I think I plan on all of them doing it. Other questions? Back to back, Justin. A little off recruiting, but the quarterback battle coach this spring mm -hmm. with those guys, what do you expect that to be like? Very com – just like you said, quarterback battle and competitive. And, I mean, you know, Haynes is a tremendous player. I, I, I thought played an excellent game in the first game. I mean, he, people – you know, we talked about he had three turnovers. you got to forget the first two had nothing to do with him. Had nothing to do. That was on the people around him. He played a heck of a game. Threw basically 300 yards, ran for almost 100 yards, scrambled, made plays. I think has a tremendous – I think he's a, a great player. Uh, Max – you know what kind of player he was. I remember recruiting him out of high school. I had him in camp when he was a young kid. Big, strong, can throw. And I'm going to tell you what, you don't realize how athletic he is. He can run and move. He really can. He's a really good athlete. Tremendous mind. Both those guys, tremendous competitors, tremendous mind. And the same thing out of Connor. I mean, I haven't worked with Connor yet, but I know what I got. I know what he's out there, man. That guy, I love everything about him. All those guys play with a chip on their shoulder. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean that they play hungry. They play hard. They're all hard-nosed. They're all competitive. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's – I think uh, – their personalities match mine pretty good. Down front, Brent. While we're getting the mic, just uh, FYI, spring practice start Monday, March 7th. NFL Pro Day, Tuesday, March 22nd. And maroon and white game Saturday, April 9th at 1 p.m. All right, Brent. You just get a recruit? No, it just, I ain't no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you my annual question about being centrally located to, I think, five of the largest 13 cities in the nation, but then also being able to go outside the state's borders as yep. well. When and you count, fun. we have eight different states and two different countries. So I guess that's nine outside. And listen, we want, we're going to recruit. Listen, we're in as good a recruiting base as there is in the country. Why shouldn't we have the number one class? Houston, the player, I mean, those guys can't drive up an hour and come to school here. I guess that's illegal, huh? <laughs> I mean, and what they do, Houston, I mean, Houston is a tremendous city. Dallas, San Antonio, the Austin area. The East Texas, I mean, there's not better situation. And we're going to recruit all those kids that we possibly can, that we, we can get, we can win national championships with, we can win SEC championships with, can be pro players, and won all that. But then also, guys have always come into Texas and taken players. We have to go nationally. You're in, a, you're in a global world right now. The ability to go to Florida, to go to Georgia, to go to Mississippi, to go to, to, go to New Jersey or go to Pennsylvania, go to Tennessee, they're all in our footprint. And you come here, the education you get, quality of life, Go watch a ball game in there, like they said. They never, none of those guys seen a ball game like that. Or not, not just the Alabama game, every week they come to. Our 12th man and our fans are not better in the country than what they do. And for us, we have to go out and be able to, as I say, cheer up and take the top players across the country that fit in here that, that make us the program we can be. And we're very happy. And it's amazing now that we are branding ourselves nationally. When kids get here, they fall in love with the place. I mean, it, it's, you listen to them what they talk and the relationships they have. And let me tell you something. A&M, I say it 100 times, the people was the key to A&M. All these buildings, all this, it ain't that. It's the people. The relationships that are here, the genuineness is here, and the sincerity that is here in this organization. And this is, this, these are 50-year commitments, not four- or five-year commitments. The Aggie, that, that, you're in that Aggie family, you're in it for life. And that's what it's about. And for us to be able to go out and do that is tremendous. And the people come here, they love it. It's an absolute blessing. Like I said, we got eight states, and then we went across the country and found one. All right, I think he came over here and found us when he came to camp. But uh, – Amazing guys, and Theo, I mean, those guys, it's, it's blessed, and we're going to continue to do that. But we, listen, we want the homegrown guys as much as we possibly can because there's great football here. But we also got to get the best players in this country. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you.